So we are officially kicking it off tonight. So I'm just going to uh, share a quick slide while our students are trickling in tonight just to set up the presentation. Um, so first off, big welcome. Um, this is the Virtual College Exploration for All Pennsylvania Students, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Association for College Admission Counseling and StriveScan. Thanks for joining. Um, brief housekeeping before we get started. Please feel free to use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is one of our many different sessions happening, so please feel free to check out our full schedule at pacac.org, pacac.org. And this presentation is recorded and it will be available within about a week at that same website, pacac.org. And with that, it is my pleasure to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters tonight. Thank you very much. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Colonel Vern Beitzel, I'm the Director of Admissions at VMI. And tonight with us, we also have our uh, Commandant, Colonel Bill Wanovich, and two cadets, Cadet Armfeld and Lochansky, and also um, from the Admissions Office, Colonel Neil Whitmore, who will be uh, handling any questions that you might have along the way. Uh, we want to try to appreciate the opportunity to um, be here with you and share some information about VMI. And uh, let me get something up here for you. And um, VMI is, um, as you may or may not be aware, a uh, very unique and different type of college than, uh, than many of the others that are uh, sharing their information through this association and others. Uh, cadets, they're individuals that are looking to be applicants and, can, and uh, cadets at BMI are looking for something different, a little bit out of the ordinary. They're looking for a challenge. Uh, they don't want to do the regular thing. Uh, quite frankly, Pennsylvania is fairly well, VMI is a state school, but Pennsylvania is fairly well represented in the Corps of Cadets. Both, uh, actually, uh, Colonel Wanovich, myself, and uh, Cadet Luchansky are all uh, matriculated from Pennsylvania to VMI. And Pennsylvania is very well represented in the core. Typically each year, we enroll about 20 to 25 Pennsylvania cadets out of an entering class of just over 500. VMI is the oldest state supported military college in the nation. It is classified as one of the six senior military colleges. The other colleges in that category include Norwich, the Citadel, Texas A&M, University of North Georgia and Virginia Tech. But even among those schools, VMI is quite unique in that we are the only one of those schools that has no graduate programs, number one, but also no civilian students. No one who's ever been a student at VMI has not been a member of the Corps of Cadets. All cadets at VMI live a very structured military environment 24 hours a day. And that is different from the other uh, senior military colleges. All cadets at VMI must complete four years of ROTC, but commissioning is optional. Also, VMI is one of the three smallest colleges in the country to be playing a Division I NCAA athletic program. First and foremost, VMI is a college. As I mentioned, we don't have any graduate programs. And we have a limited number of undergraduate majors, only 14 to choose from, but we do have several minors and concentrations. Uh, VMI believes that the academic, uh, that academic excellence is best maintained in a small college where the number of disciplines that are offering degrees is restricted. Our faculty are hired because of their ability and their desire to teach at the undergraduate level. They conduct a lot of research, they do a lot of writing, but their primary responsibility is teaching you as an undergraduate student. And I think that should be, uh, you need to look at that very carefully as you look at your, uh, what you wanna get out of a college. Our 10 to one student faculty ratio allows for small classes and provides a very personalized instruction. Virtually all of our faculty hold the PhD and they get to know their students on a very personal basis. They take an active role in the non-academic aspects of cadet life 
And they also serve as academic advisors. As a matter of fact, I encourage you to actually contact a department head individually if you want to find out a little bit more information about a major. I think you'll find that all of them will be very willing to share information with you. There's also a wide range of additional academic enrichment programs that you can uh, participate in, the honors program, undergraduate research that where cadets often work hand in hand with faculty members, a study abroad program uh, that covers sometimes a full semester, sometimes uh, breaks, and sometimes during the summer, and also a very strong um, undergraduate research program and honors program. As I mentioned, all cadets at VMI take four years of ROTC and all the services are offered at VMI. Uh, VMI graduates have made their mark in the military. We're the only senior military college to graduate the highest ranking four-star generals across three of the services. We've had two of our graduates who have served as Marine Corps Commandants. We've had the uh, Army Chief of Staff and the Air Force Chief of Staff. And currently the Secretary of the Army is a VMI Army ROTC graduate. And across the Department of Defense ROTC programs, VMI generally commissions more officers than any other college in the country. One of the things that we think is kind of unique and important is that our cadets have the opportunity to become familiar with the culture of all the different services. You select your own ROTC program, but your roommate, teammates, and friends might be from a different, maybe studying in a different ROTC uh, service. So you get exposed to the culture of, of the different services, which can be very helpful when you go on active duty. We encourage commissioning, but more important, we, we encourage service. Uh, commissioning is optional. But right now, about 55 to 60% of the graduates each year choose to go the commissioning route. But our hope is that 100% of our graduates will serve, uh, serve society either in the military or through other opportunities. As I said, VMI is one of the smallest colleges in the country to, to be playing in Division uh, NCAA Division I program. The slides, uh, you can see here what sports are available. The teams are comprised of both scholarship and walk-on athletes. So the si given the size that we are and the, the number of sports offered, it does provide an opportunity for many of our cadets to play at the division one athletic level that, that might not be available to them at other colleges. We also have an extremely active club sport program, but I'm going to uh, defer to uh, Colonel Wanovich to maybe touch base on that. Applying to VMI is like a like applying to a civilian regular civilian school as opposed to pursuing an appointment to a federal academy, which uh, some of you I, I feel sure are probably considering. We do have an early decision deadline date of the fifteenth of November, but that's binding, so you shouldn't apply as an early decision applicant, unless definitely VMI is your first choice. If a student does complete the early decision applicant application and you get all your material to us by the 15th of November, we're gonna give you an initial notification no later than the 15th of December. If you're not offered an early decision appointment, you are considered along with the applicants that apply under their regular decision program. That deadline is the 1st of February, but we really encourage you to apply early in the year. Uh, we're on rolling admission, so the earlier you complete an application, the earlier you're going to receive an initial decision from us. The other thing that you need to consider, too, is some of our majors fill up uh, early in the application cycle. And so some of the individuals that apply late in the year are forced sometimes to accept their second major choice rather than their first. The deadline dates that are listed here also, I wanna mention are the dates by which we should have received all of the required um, items for application. Not, that's not the date where you're supposed to start the application. 
Uh, the items that we need for an application this year do not include the SAT. We are going test optional this year, given the COVID uh, uh, situation. Uh, so a student does not need to submit uh, SAT or ACT results. You certainly can if you want to, but you're not put at a disadvantage if you choose not to. Uh, the application fee of $40 can be waived for uh, many individuals, usually through the ACAC, the College Board, or the ACT application fee waiver forms. Of course, we need uh, official transcripts. One letter of recommendation is required, and that is from someone at your high school. Um, there is an optional personal statement, but we strongly recommend that you complete and submit that personal statement. Appl uh, applicants who are uh, very qualified and uh, receive offers of appointment generally um, submit very strong academic credentials. You can see here some of the, the profile of the last year's class. But we factor in a lot of different things. We're looking for students that are well-rounded. We're looking for students uh, with, with self-discipline, motivation, strength of character. So we're, we're looking at a lot of different things like that uh, when we evaluate the application. We're fortunate in that we are one of the highest ranked public colleges in the country for endowment per student. And that allows us to provide substantial financial aid to a lot of our cadets. Some of it's need-based, some of it's merit-based, athletic scholarships, and about almost 30% of the cadets at VMI either matriculate with an ROTC scholarship or pick up an ROTC scholarship once they're there. We think it's very important for a student looking at VMI to visit. Um, it's very unique, and we think that spending uh, some face-to-face -face time with an admissions officer is helpful. We are doing interviews both in person and virtually, and you can register for that on, uh, on our webpage. We do have a, uh, some open house programs that are available. Uh, we hope to go back to our, in the spring, we hope to go back to our overnight open house programs, but that remains to be seen. Our staff wants to get to know you personally, and you can register for both an interview and for the fall open house programs, which are a single day uh, program. You can register for those online. Our contact information is here, and we're ready at any time to answer any questions that you might have. So with that, I'm going to um, bow out and uh, ask uh, Colonel Wanovich to step in. Hey gang, let me get the share screen up here. Okay, hopefully you can get a full view there. I'm Colonel Bill Wanovich. I, uh, I'm a career Army officer. I retired in uh, 2014, and I've been the Commandant of Cadets, or what would be referred to on most campuses as the Vice President for Student Affairs um, for, for VMI for the last seven years. I'm a native of Pittsburgh. And uh, boy, things have really changed uh, since, since the days of going down to the convention center and uh, meeting three cadets. And that's when I, I first uh, found out about VMI. I can tell you uh, that, um, you know, I, I, in finding out about it, I, I would have had trouble spelling it. Uh, didn't, just, didn't know anything, just didn't know anything about the school. And so I would, uh, I would encourage you to continue to uh, look in depth, uh, listen to these briefs, and then please, at some point, come and visit here. It's really important that you get to know uh, the school and what you're getting into. Some of what we do here, what would my staff do, uh, does with the cadets, we train citizen soldiers. We're, uh, we, we're about making future leaders. There are 14 really great uh, majors out there, lots of opportunities to commission, but at the end of the day, our, our country, our communities, our government, our leaders, business, all and our businesses all need leaders. It is what, it is what will set you apart from your peers. Uh, there are leadership opportunities here, whether they are part of rank structure in our regimental system or, or part of class structure or clubs or, or, or a multitude, hundreds of, of opportunities for leadership. And I, and I think that this is what we're trying to do in, in training 
uh, not just soldiers, not just military, but citizen soldiers, people that will go back out and lead in their communities. My team, we coach and teach, mentor, we lead, train, and uh, provide discipline to the core cadets. We help guide them. The, but the core runs the core. We help guide them. Uh, members of my staff act as tactical officers for a company. One member of my staff will cover down on about, 100 and, uh, about 160 cadets in a cadet company. And so you can understand how important right off the bat that uh, that, that leadership and that company is and, and all that they bring to it. They are running it. Uh, they're, they're running the operations every single day. Uh, my responsibility here is for all facets of cadet life every single day, cadet activities and clubs and the day-to-day -day operations from the first formation in the morning uh, till the last formation at night to include all the things we do on the weekends, parades, training, all of those pieces are, are what we bring uh, to the to Corps of Cadets every single day. I'm, I'm responsible for all the areas of safety and security and risk mitigation. So oftentimes I, I tell the audience out there, probably the most risky thing in the world is allowing 19 year olds to train 18 year olds. And so we, we have sophomores and juniors and seniors, we call them third class and second class and first class. And, and they train the new, the new cadets or the rats. And uh, it's a tough, it's a tough system. It's an adversarial system, um, but but it's a good, it's a good system, and it and it produces uh, great character. It produces great success uh, in all that we do. But I'm responsible for that safety and security, and all the risk uh, that that goes with that. We're very busy here. Uh, we do we do uh, lots of training, a lot of physical training, a lot of obstacle courses, a lot of military training, and obviously any any amount of that is going to have some risk. And so we want to make sure we do each part of it safely. And I'm, I've been, we've continued to do that very well uh, here at the school. A big part of my job is to synchronize and de-conflict what ends up being a pack schedule. And I'll show you what that looks like a little later on. But the reality here is uh, everybody wants about 15 more minutes of your time. Each academic uh, uh, advisor, each academic instructor would love to have some more time with you on, the, on your individual course. I know our coaches want more time with our athletes, our our club coaches with our club athletes. I certainly want more time to make sure your uniform scored away and do room inspections and make sure our parades are looking uh, just right. Our, our, uh, our grounds and everything here is, is just, just perfect. And our training, our military training is good. Uh, I, know, I know the chaplain would love a few minutes with you in, in, in the things that he does and our, uh, our, our opportunities to, uh, to uh, go into town or, or support community service through EMS or through firefighters or something like that. Everybody wants, everybody wants more time and, it, and it's impossible to do that. So we, ha, we, de, we synchronize that and deconflict it through a schedule. It's our goal here that you, uh, have, you have the college experience that you wanna have. And I think if you'll find in a lot of schools that, that you're, you're asked or kind of persuaded to move in one particular direction. Maybe if you're playing ball, maybe if you're playing football, that the coach wants you there and he wants you to really focus on that. Or, or if, you, if you're RTC, that they really want you to spend a lot of time with that. It's our job to make sure that you can, be a, you can have a great major, like a mechanical engineer. And if you want a commission in the United States Army, you can do that. And then if you play lacrosse, you have time to do that. You should, have, you should have the best college experience that you can have. And it's our job to give that to you. You shouldn't have to pick and choose. This is the only four years you're gonna to get to come to college. And you should, you should be able to leave here doing the things that you wanted to do and enjoy in these four years as part of your, as part of your adventure uh, as, you, as you move on into adulthood. We're going to provide those great opportunities for leadership in your daily life. That includes rank and responsibility and authority that goes with it. And we support that commonality of purpose. Everybody here uh, takes part in the, in the business uh, of, of each, part of the, each part of the cadet day and each part of the uh, uh, cadet life uh, here here in barracks. I just I, I threw a Vince Lombardi uh, uh, a quote up there. Uh, you know, at this we're, we're chasing perfection. We we're going to relentlessly chase it because in the process we know we'll ca catch excellence. I'm not remotely interested in just being good. Look, I I need to tell you, if if your goal, if you look at something and you say my goal is to get uh, a 60 on that physics test. You're probably on the wrong. You're probably on the wrong webinar. We're looking for people that want to max out. We're looking for people that want to be challenged. We're looking for people that want to do the very best. If you go into things and you're looking for what's the minimum requirement, 
uh, it's going to be tough for you to fit in here because there's too many other people that are really willing to give 100% effort. That's what we're asking for. Give us your max effort. Give us all that, you, that you've got, whether it's physical, physical fitness, whether it's academics, whether it's your military bearing or discipline or leadership. Give your max effort at, at all times and, and you'll never be able to go wrong. We're a school of responsibility and consequence. Um, late is late. And, and we're not afraid to tell people that, 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 that they, you know, that that's, there, there aren't a lot of excuses. People aren't interested in listening to excuses. So we, we have standards here for everything that we do. Um, meeting a standard probably isn't going to get you a pat on the back. Failing to meet a standard is probably going to result in a consequence. We're a school of great opportunity. We've already talked about our honor and integrity. This is one of the finest honor codes in the nation. And I think our cadets will speak to that. I hope they will. We're a school of leadership and, and a school of academic excellence uh, as, as we, you know, as we continue, uh, as we continue forward. This is what the core looks like on parade. And I show this uh, to, to demonstrate uh, uh, how we divide our, our cadets, our 1600 cadets out there. We have a band and uh, nine companies, Alpha through India company, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Those companies, uh, people often ask how we assign to the companies and we do that by height. And Alpha being a tall company and Bravo being shorter and Charlie and Delta being shorter yet and Echo and Foxtrot shorter and then, and then back up to India, which is tall again. So tall on the ends and short in the middle. And people ask why we do that. And the reason is simple. You don't control your height. In any given company, I have a mix of everything. I have a mix of all the majors, all 14 majors. We have both the STEM and the liberal arts. We have males and females mixed together. We have athletes and non-athletes. We have people that are commissioning and people that are not commissioning. We have rankers and privates. We have, we, we have, uh, we have athletes in there and we have other folks that, that, that aren't gonna be athletes. And so we have this great mixture uh, in each and every single company. No company takes on this particular identity except for they're either tall or medium or short. And, and I think what is important about that is that we're not, we're not interested in, in trying to match you up uh, with people that do things just like you. The goal here is for 500 people to come together from 500 different locations, come together and form one united class. You start as a mass of 500 and you come together as a class of one. And that takes uh, six or seven months to get that done. And it's a tough, it's a tough road, but you do that together with the, with the members of your company, probably 50 to 55 new rats uh, in each company each year. And, um, and, and, and the, the goal here, again, is to put those differences behind you. Uh, but, you know, put those things, put those things that, that, that you're here to do behind you and become part of that team first. The people that you mix in your room with, you've got to learn to get along. And so, so th this requires that each, each and every one of our cadets learns to be civil, learns to be decent to one another, and learns to be respectful of one another. And I would tell you, that if we, haven't, if we haven't graduated you and you're not civil and decent and respectful of one another, somewhere along the line, we failed. And that's part of this, this, this mixing that occurs uh, as you go into this, uh, into VMI and you're assigned to a company and a room uh, as, part of, as part of the core cadets. This mass of 500 becomes a class. It's a process. This is what our day looks like, very busy. Wake up at 6.30 in the morning. We stand all of our cadets out, uh, salute the flag, and uh, march down for our first breakfast each morning. Class periods, we look a lot like a high school. Class periods uh, from um, 8 o'clock until, until noon. There's a dinner period for about two hours where you walk down and get dinner. In the afternoon, more classes and labs go from about 1 o'clock till just, just around 4 o'clock. And uh, at 4 o'clock every day, from 4 o'clock till almost 7 o'clock, that's when our NCAA, our clubs, our practice, our rat challenge, all those activities go off for about two, two and a half hours. And they practice, they come back in and they get cleaned up and then they go to supper. Somewhere in there at five o'clock, we have a guard mount. We put, put you on guard every single day. There's a lot of folks that talk about duty. We actually, we actually do, we have duty. And so guard, each company uh, has about 20 members uh, of that company on guard mount at any given day. We do supper. We bring the flags back down and salute our flag and we march down, a formal march down to the mess hall for dinner 
uh, we, we do the, the Dean evening study periods about three hours, three and a half hours long, lights out with some late study, and then rinse and repeat Monday through Friday. Saturday is a day here. It includes parades. It includes football games, speakers, training. Uh, we get up at the same time on Saturday morning, and we go through a, a, a modified morning uh, schedule uh, into the afternoon, a very busy day as well. Most weekends don't start here until around uh, late afternoon on Saturday, if we have them at all. So you see those other things that are going on, very busy, very busy with fitness and all these other things that we're doing. This is what that year looks like. We have a cadet oath and uh, the, the D-Day Memorial up in Bedford, Virginia. We do Saturday road marches and physical training, normally four to six football games a year, a core trip to one of our adversaries, normally down at the Citadel. FTX weekend uh, for all the services and parents weekend as well. We culminate a lot of that with a 20 mile march toward the end of the year, beginning of the, the uh, spring semester, uh, a validation period and culminating tests and exercises. And then the second semester, really weapons qualification and new cadet training, uh, first aid and na land navigation and survival and field craft. And then we have an FTX at the, at the end of the year. So it's a very busy year uh, throughout, um, but, but, but a very enjoyable and, and something that you'll never forget. I talk about fitness. I think it's important everybody understands that. Physical fitness is, is critical to what we're doing. It's key to everything. Strength, stamina, focus. It, it tells me everything about you. It tells me how determined you are, your motivation, your discipline. And so I can't tell you enough about how important. If you're coming to VMI, get started yesterday. Get started getting ready uh, with the physical fitness requirements uh, to, to get in here and be, and be uh, physically tough and ready for, for, uh, for all that we're doing here. Mentally, mentally, we need mental toughness as well. This is about uh, confidence and uh, overcoming obstacles. Really, it's, it's, it's how you respond to a challenge. Be prepared to, fa to fail here. And it's, it's not that you failed that's the, that's the problem. It's how you respond to that. If you can get up and move through it, around it, over it, under it, it doesn't matter. Keep getting up. Keep moving forward. It's that mental toughness and that confidence and that response to failing that counts. There's a big difference between failing and quitting. Failing is temporary. Failing is only as long as you decide it is, and you learn a little bit about yourself and you can move forward. Quitting becomes a forever thing here. So we're showing you the, how important this is. That emotional fitness, self-control. How are you under pressure when there's chaos around you? What is it like? How do you face and overcome that failure? How do you face and overcome challenges? And then obviously that spiritual or social fitness, drawing strength from others, being part of a team, putting something, putting the things that are part of you behind you first and, and making the team first is what we're part of. There's our club sports there. I just, I highlight a bunch of those. Triathlon, there's a team that's uh, top 10 on the East Coast. Um, we have, we have uh, lacrosse is normally a, a lead eight team. Boxing was a, was a national champion in 2015. Men's rugby was a runner-up about three years ago. Women's rugby undefeated last year. Lots of shooting teams in there. Uh, powerlifting, 20 to nationals. L very physical. We have as many young men and women in our clubs uh, as we do in the NCAA. Look, all I want you to do, I don't want you to have to worry about raising money or doing anything. You practice. You compete. We'll pay, we'll pay to get you there. We'll pay for your food. We'll pay for where you're lodging. All I want you to do is practice, enjoy competing for our, for our school. These are some of the other clubs and training programs. All the red ones are those that are really about uh, community service, emergency, emergency medical services. We probably have 50 EMTs here, lifeguards, Special Olympics, building bridges, lots of, lots of opportunities here uh, to give back to the community and do something that you really love to do. These are my final thoughts for you. And I would just tell you, if, you, you know, if, the, if, this, res, if this resonates with you, then you're coming to the right place. If you're looking for a challenge, you should expect one and don't expect anything less and don't whine when you get a challenge. That's part of what we're telling you right up front. Total fitness, critical. Get ready, start getting ready now. Everyone here is special. No one is extra special. What's really great about VMI, it doesn't matter what got you in the door. You're now here. Your hair's gonna get cut. You're gonna get in the same uniform. You're gonna step up to the same line and you're gonna be required to compete and, and work with and, and, and with and against the folks uh, that are here with you, with them working together as a team, but also competing against them in a, in a, in a good non-adversarial way uh, to make yourself better. Truly, true commitment is what we're looking for. 
quit talking about it, start doing it. We don't want to hear how many pull-ups you can do. Go, go get it done. Our method proven, we're not going to change for you. We've been doing this for about 181 years. All right, guarantee for success, very simple. Just don't quit. Always give your best effort. If you never quit, it's hard for you not to, to ultimately be successful. Standards here in, are enforced. No praise for meeting them and expect a consequence for failing them. It just, it, look, you, if you're coming here, if this is where you want to be, you want to be among the very best. You're taking a path that very few people are taking. This is a, you're, you're around no ordinary people. You're at no ordinary college and you'll start something that becomes no ordinary life. With that, I appreciate it. And I'll turn this over to the cadets. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Armfield. I am from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I'm a first class cadet here at VMI, which is also called a senior. Uh, I am a civil engineering and Chinese major, and I am on the cross country and track team. So one reason why I came to VMI was for the ROTC department. Um, I was looking for a school that had the, offered ROTC and as well as structure. So that's really what drew me in. Uh, I'm a part of the Navy ROTC and I'm commissioning in May. So being a part of ROTC at VMI is, is important and also uh, it helps you stay on track and get to know people. Um, I really enjoy having that community as well as the community uh, on the track team and cross country team. So I love VMI for, like I just said, the small community. You get to know your teachers and academics and you get to know your BRs, which are your classmates. Uh, you build that throughout the throughout all four years, really. And uh, both the teachers and students are there for you when you need it. Like mentioned by Colonel Wanovich, uh, this place is challenging. And I encourage you to, like he said, to start training now. It's definitely not easy, but anyone can do it that puts their mind to it. So one important thing at VMI is academics. As I mentioned, I was a civil. A lot of people do major in STEM, STEM uh, subjects, but there's also a lot in the liberal arts as well. And you're, if you come in and you would like to change your major, you can do that, as well as um, obviously stay with with what you come in with. But the teachers here are really willing to sit down with you and to help you out if you're struggling. Uh, they're always always looking out and uh, will help you along the way. Um, so one thing, another thing that I love about VMI is the opportunities that it gives you. You can you can take on as much as you want. There's no limits. And I've realized that over the last few years that whatever you want to do, you can do it, and no one's going to stop you from from you know joining clubs, from joining a team from taking on extra responsibilities as head cadets or cadets in charge. So I definitely encourage you to, to look at all the opportunities available and to seek out ones that you're interested in. There's, there's so many that you can choose from. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Jake Luchansky. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Cadet Jacob Luchansky. I'm a second classman here. That means uh, I'm a junior here at VMI. Uh, I'm an applied mathematics major. I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but I currently live in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, so one of the re main reasons why I came to VMI was uh, because of sports uh, and, ac and the academics as well. So I was originally recruited uh, here to be a Division One pitcher. Um, I was getting recruited by the Naval Academy here and NC State. I visited all of those colleges, went to a lot of camps, talked to all the coaching staff, but VMI really stuck out to me when I met the players. The players at the other schools were really full of themselves and arrogant and I that, that wasn't who I was. And then I came to VMI and I met all the players and coaching staff and was absolutely shocked to see that there was a ton of people just like me out there all in, all in one place. So that was one of the main reasons why I came to VMI. Um, the other reason why I came to VMI is because I really value academics. I have always had cut myself to a higher standard with GPA requirements, taking the rigorous classes. I, like, I know some of you out there know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm part of the Institute Honors Program here. Uh, I wasn't originally introduced into the program as I came in as a freshman. Uh, however, I did pick up a slot into the uh, Honors Program at the end of my sophomore year. 
And now I'm currently in it and I love it. It's really challenging. I get to explore different things that I never really thought about before. It really opens up my mind uh, academically as well. Uh, one of the major requirements for being in the Institute Honors Program is you have to have above a 3.5 GPA and you have to keep, you have to keep that for the majority of that you're in the program. And that's unfortunately how people get out of the Institute Honors Program and how I got a slot. So I'm very thankful for that. Uh, one of the things that is really important to me here at VMI is definitely how Anna said uh, is the friendships that you make here. I've made friends from all sorts of places here at VMI. I've met one of my friends, he's from Maryland. One of my friends is from literally all over the country. He's moved to every different kind of place. And then another person's actually from VMI, uh, not from VMI, from Pennsylvania, uh, excuse me. So he, it was really awesome meeting all them. And I love meeting all new people here, especially every day. Like you meet people from different classes that you usually don't see on a daily basis. So it's really awesome seeing all these people and getting to know them on a personal level. So that's definitely one of the advantages of having a smaller college place. So one of the other things that I really do appreciate about VMI is the class size. The class size is really small. It's not like your typical college class where you have 300 people in a general chemistry class. Uh, here in my chemistry class that I took last semester, it was maybe about 10 to 15. And it was really personal. If I ever struggled, I got to talk to my teachers. So it, that's one of the awesome things about BMI as well. And that's all I, all I have to really talk about. So I'll turn it over to, I guess, the question section of the seminar. So. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Colonel Whitmore, are there any questions that uh, you wanna pose? Yes, we had a few come in. Um, and one was someone asked, does VMI accept AP, IB, and or dual enrollment courses? And the answer is yes. So, and you will see this posted on our website, uh, a schedule of both the AP courses and the IB courses that we accept and the exam score that you need to achieve for us to give you some transfer credit. And then also we do accept dual enrollment courses. And so many uh, and or most dual enrollment courses that are offered by sponsoring community colleges in states around the country will be accepted for transfer credit at VMI. And so during the application process, if you have a question about whether something would transfer, just reach out to us and we'll let you know how that would come in and mesh in with your, your VMI schedule. Another question, and I'm, I'm gonna let either uh, Cadet Armfield or Cadet Luchansky answer this. Um, what is it like to live under the VMI honor code? So I'll start out. Um, that's also one thing that drew me into VMI. I went to a, a high school that had an honor code and that's something that um, that really holds true into my belief system. And just living, living by the honor code every day makes a huge difference in your lifestyle and how you talk to people, how you interact. And to me, it, it changes the whole perspective of life and how you look at things. And so when you go out into town or go home for breaks, you're still under that honor code. And that's one thing that uh, maybe people not from VMI uh, don't realize that all VMI cadets are still under that honor code, even if they're not on post or on VMI's campus. So uh, it really hits home for me. And I think that having the honor code helps you trust your, your teammates and your classmates and your teachers even more than uh, anywhere else in the world. So I will also build off of that statement. It is definitely very interesting to have an honor code so strict and trusted here at VMI. Everybody lives by the same code. Nobody, nobody has any exceptions. It's a one sanctioned system. If you lie, cheat or steal one time or tolerate anybody that does, they're gone. They're, they're just not allowed here. But how it's unique and different is I can leave my $2,000 laptop in my book bag just laying around outside in the middle of the street and everybody will leave it alone, not bat an eye at it. They, nobody will touch it. Nobody will steal it. That's one of the crazy things. It's actually gotten me in trouble back home because I've left something in the street and 
there it goes. It's all gone. But that's what's really unique about VMI is that it just builds that trust and character that we do have here of no lying, cheating, or stealing. So it's really something unique and I appreciate a lot. Another question we had was, can you double major at VMI? And the answer is yes. So VMI has 14 majors, but then we also have 27 minors and concentrations. So some cadets will choose to double major and then others will choose to select a major and then select one of those minors or concentrations. And kind of a, a similar uh, question, a little bit about the academic enrichment program, which um, uh, Cadet Luchansky touched on there as well with the honors program is, what about study abroad opportunities? And so, yes, many cadets at VMI will study abroad either for a semester or a summer program. And so often uh, when you get into your third class, as we call it, or your sophomore year, you will meet with your academic advisor and look at study abroad opportunities that would be interesting to you, select one that is out there. And so VMI has relationships and um, other communication with uh, programs literally all over the world. And so a lot of cadets will choose one of those programs and then spend a uh, semester abroad uh, studying and then getting credits that will come back to their, their academic major at, at VMI. Um, also research opportunities, a lot of a lot of young men and women today are interested in the research opportunities that they have, uh, even at the undergraduate level. And so BMI has a re undergraduate research program where usually in your junior or senior year, you will pair up with a faculty member to do some research in an area uh, in a topic that you have an interest in. Um, and many times it's over this summer, where you will really focus on that program or project. Um, and then many cadets will, will come up and uh, write a formal paper and present it at a, a conference. Someone else asked more about athletics. Do you have to be a recruited athlete to participate in the NCAA program? And the answer is no. BMI does have opportunities for walk-on athletes. So even if you aren't recruited uh, as an incoming freshman cadet, you would still have the opportunity to participate in NCAA athletics. Uh, and then of course, as Colonel Wanovich was saying, we have an extensive club sport uh, and intramural program. So uh, there are many, many uh, athletic and, and sports opportunities available to cadets, both on the NCAA side and then also on the uh, the club sport and, uh, and intramural side. Looking at um, a few other questions. Uh, somebody asked, what makes VMI different from a federal service academy? Well, at an academy uh, such as West Point, Naval Academy, Air Force Academy, you have uh, made an agreement with that service branch to commission uh, at graduation, where at VMI, we have all the services so you can make that selection, but then uh, in some cases you can also change. Uh, if you see or learn about an opportunity in another service that interests you, you may wanna make a change. Uh, so you can do that. And also at VMI, you have more uh, academic freedom uh, to where you can double major or put in a minor or concentration. Uh, so where VMI is a college first and we're focused on your education and development from that standpoint. And then the military uh, side is, is put in there as well, but that is not uh, the overriding or all encompassing factor that we, that we have. And I'll follow up with, uh, with one final question here for, the, for uh, either cadet is, what is the thing that you like most about VMI? And what is the thing that you like least about VMI? I guess I'll start it off. Um, so one of the things that I really like about VMI personally 
is I talked about it before is all the friendships that I've made here. The people here are completely different from anywhere else in the world. Like meeting people that are just like you that have the same integrity, the same responsibility, the same everything about you. It's just awesome meeting all those people and being friends and doing accomplishing tasks with them. One of the things that I dislike about BMI that I that doesn't uh, that most other colleges don't offer is the fact that we don't have a lot of time outside of the school and that but that's okay because we have time we have time slots where we actually do important stuff as well so like we just can't go out uh into town like mo like most other colleges you guys can just go out to town whenever you want do kind of live your own free lifestyle it's very structured here which i do appreciate in most cases but one of the things that we are limited to is the time that we get to leave here as well um and i do unfortunately have to cut us off at this point um, but I do, of course, want to say a huge thank you to our participating students as well as all of our fantastic panelists tonight. So I'm just going to jump in and share a quick final slide, which basically says, hey, thank you guys for coming. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. And we do really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. As I said at the beginning, this is just one of our many sessions being hosted. Uh, we'd love to see you back for any additional sessions at PACAC.org, P-A-C-A-C.org. In about a week, you will be able to find the session's recordings as well as all of our other session recordings, same website, P-A-C-A-C.org. And on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you guys so much and have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.